everyone. My name is Sean Stewart, and I'm here with Peter Scalzo, and we are doing our first episode of Cancer and Peace. Peter's going to be the host of this podcast, and I'm going to be here to facilitate discussion with him as he's been on a 17-year cancer journey with metastatic cancer. He has his own book, Cancer and Peace, that he has uh, put out some time back, what, three or four years ago, Peter? Yep. Something like that. Three. Yeah, yeah. three years ago. And he's also uh, a attorney that was a practicing attorney who was sent home on disability from his cancer journey. He's also uh, been speaking quite a bit uh, in local areas, sharing his cancer journey for the last several years. He's run a cancer support group, and he has been involved with recovery for several years. And so he's going to share a bunch about his journey on his journey to peace in the midst of a cancer storm. So, Peter, do you want to tell us a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Sean. I I really love to step into this journey with people. Uh, I think that's why my interest in doing a podcast, I seem to be asked a lot to speak at different forums, whether American Cancer Society, churches, wherever. And I find myself uh, also coming alongside cancer patients constantly. And I thought, okay, beyond the book and Facebook and things like that, uh, it would be beneficial for myself, but also others to step into a discussion through podcasts. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to lay out kind of a, an overall resume for me as a cancer patient. And in 2005, I was diagnosed with bladder cancer. I was 43 years old at the time, married six children, a practicing attorney. And through a year of, of seeing blood in my urine and, and seeing different urologists, they finally did simple x-rays and located five tumors within my bladder. And they did a little surgical procedure where they go in and scrape and do biopsy, turned out to be high-grade urothelial cancer, which is rare uh, amongst the bladder cancers, especially for a man who's 43 years old. And I didn't fit into any of the risk categories. It usually happens to men in their 60s who've smoked, worked around chemicals, those kinds of things. I had never smoked. So needless to say, it was uh, quite a shock to get that diagnosis. Uh, my mom was actually dealing with terminal ovarian cancer at the same time. But I ended up down at Memorial Sloan Kettering in Manhattan, arguably either the number one or number two cancer center in the United States. And that actually had a surgery in 2005, July 27th, to remove the bladder, parts of my ureter, prostate, and replace uh, those parts with intestinal tissue. Uh, Sloan was an expert at doing that surgery. And that launched me uh, into a 17-year cancer journey, always thinking with the surgeries that I had, that I was all set, uh, cancer would not return. Uh, 10 years after that surgery, it became metastatic. Uh, but I'll give an overview right now. So uh, yes, yeah, 17 years, I'm about to go into my 18th year uh, on this cancer uh, journey. And I have had 15 uh, major surgeries, mostly major, where I have had overnight stays and uh, a couple of my surgeries were first impression surgeries. I have a head surgeon that goes around the world and speaks and uses my case from a surgical perspective because some of the stuff that he did inside of me was new at that time. Um, and uh, in 2015, I had major surgery and that's when we discovered that the cancer became metastatic, which launched my whole uh, metastatic journey, which has involved uh, six recurrences through the whole time span, but um, also uh, radiation and um, uh, chemo rinses. And I've had countless surgical procedures because he has to go in to my urinary system, check for cancer, and and uh, also change stents because in 2015, tumors blocked the urine and damaged my kidneys, so I have chronic kidney disease. Um, and so I have all these surgical procedures. I have MRIs, CAT scans, and PET scans constantly. Um, and I think, you know, for me, the big news is uh, I'm going to my seventh year of immunotherapy. Um, and that uh, is 
longer than anyone else that my oncologist sees. Um, and so I've had this real, I couldn't do chemotherapy when the metastatic cancer came out because my kidneys were so compromised. They, I went to Yale, um, you know, of course Sloan and, and Lenox Hill down in the city where I had a, a lot of my major surgeries and, um, and they just uh, said that if you get chemotherapy, it's going to destroy your kidneys. So no one would give it to me. And they couldn't see active disease. Uh, and in 2017, um, I had t I had a tumor the size of a tennis ball and tumors all, all throughout my urinary system and outside of my urinary system. So twice Sloan um, advised that I go home and call hospice care. Uh, once in 2015 and once in 2017. Sloan couldn't surgically handle my case anymore. So that's, uh, that's how I ended up uh, in 2010. I ended up having major surgery down at Lenox Hill Hospital in Manhattan because of a specialist that just was a, a urinary specialist that, that, that was world renowned. And I'm, I am still with him. Um, so that's kind of an overview. There's a lot of there's a lot of events within that, and uh, and so um, the one of the major themes of this podcast is uh, how do I find peace? Uh, what are some tools that I use, and and how do I find inner peace through this journey, which is ongoing? I was with my oncologist yesterday, <laughs> infusion yesterday, so. Uh, it's a 17-year journey that uh, appears to not have an end to it. Yeah, you've been on this journey for a while. And I think one of the reasons why you wanted to share up front that journey is if you're in a cancer journey right now and you're not sure, you know, what's next, what it looks like, Peter shared his resume of cancer experience because it's been long. He's gone through almost everything you could imagine in this space from surgery to the chemo to uh, radiation and immunotherapy. But more than that, you've had the emotional ride, the mm -hmm. inside ride, all the things that have happened in your life that has been, frankly, an attack on your peace. Um, and so that's what we really wanted to do is set out, hey, you've had this journey, but how did you find peace in the midst yeah. of that? I think also one key part of my cancer journey, which I don't know if I shared, but I've had six recurrences. So every time there's a recurrence, there's a, a, a living through the trauma again of getting a diagnosis, finding out what needs to be done, starting treatment. And um, uh, there's been times in my cancer journey when I've said, I can't do this anymore. Enough is enough. And I want to share about those walls, those dark nights of the soul that I've hit, and share about um, the emotional journey part of it. And then also, you know, how does, how can an inner journey bring peace? How does that even work? Yeah. And that's brings to why maybe I'm part of this podcast mm -hmm. is that I'm not a cancer patient um, and have not been diagnosed with cancer. But you and I met in recovery rooms mm. and developed a deep friendship as we were both going through what we call dark night of the soul or mm -hmm. walls or where our lives have um, shown that they've fallen apart, where our brokenness has shown up in big ways. And in those recovery rooms, we learned a lot about how to journey through emotional health to emotional health, not just, and I guess through in some ways too, but to find health and spiritual health and healing uh, from our own brokenness inside. And because you found that you weren't just, your body wasn't just broken with cancer. You mentioned the trauma and how did you process traumas and how do you process trauma? But you also found that there was an un emotionally unhealthy guy uh, inside too that needed deep healing. And that's going to be a big part of what we're going to talk about in this journey is how cancer and how trauma and how your life's journey um, has move forward how you've used that brokenness to move to a deep inner healing and peace. Mm. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, how do I, uh, how does one get up in the morning uh, with a metastatic journey and deal with fear, anger, and even sadness, maybe grieving uh, besides trauma and, and get up in the morning and, 
and go on a journey to find inner peace that day because uh, no one wants to dwell in tough emotions and yet it's necessary to go into those tough emotions, go through them to get to a place of peace. But um, it is true and, and you will hear a lot about uh, my journey into recovery, uh, which is a 12-step program that I, I've been involved with, Sean and I have, and um, and it's the sense of, I, I got into the program uh, because my marriage was falling apart, and uh, I did end up getting divorced after 36 years of marriage, but uh, uh, it's the concept of, uh, I'm in a very painful place and I don't know what to do about it. I was seeing a therapist and everything, and I still didn't know what to do with it and about it. So in episode one, we're not going to be able to cover all those details. Right, right. But throughout the course of this podcast, Peter's going to share his life and story, and I'm going to share with him at the same time of our own journeys of finding inner healing. Mm -hmm. And we call this inner journey, um, and I think that's a, a good term for us to use. I think what our hope is, and your hope for especially in sharing your cancer journey, is to put out what uh, we discussed as trail markers. It's like you're you're going along a trail and there's markers along the way, things that you could find that would help on that journey, tools, resources, but also how you got from point A to point B right. uh, in your life. And I know that one of the stories that I'm going to be interested to hear from you that I know about is where you were at a point of you've given up yeah. in the hospital after yeah. surgery. and you had a tool that was put on your chest, right. but you and you had to choose to walk into that to right. find hope right. when things seemed really hopeless. And that's what this podcast is going to be about: is how to get right. there. Right. And you're going to share some of those really deep and painful, hard experiences and what it did to not just your cancer journey, but to your life as a whole. Yeah, Sean, I think that's great, and I think I'd like to have a discussion. I mean, I'm on a journey too. I think that I have found answers for me that have worked. Um, but I'm still open, you know, to what the journey holds. And uh, I don't think I have all the answers. <laughs> I know that I don't. Uh, but I'm open to uh, discussing the hard topics uh, that, you know, when, when I was diagnosed with cancer, uh, there was no e emotional support. Um, there were uh, people in my community and church that said they were praying for me. Um, and people, sometimes people would say things like, it's going to be fine and all that, and don't worry about it. And God's going to do this and that in this journey for you. And, uh, but when I went to the hospital to get my surgeries, infusions, whatever, um, there was like one social worker that would walk around. And I'd be sitting there and she'd say, would you like to talk about anything? And it wasn't exactly the setting Mm -hmm. that I wanted to discuss anything. So I kind of white knuckled it, you know, like on a roller coaster ride where I'm like, okay, I got through the surgery, everything's good. And then in um, 2015, my 14th surgery, uh, I couldn't do that anymore. Uh, I had hit a wall that, uh, that uh, I, I, I gave up at that point. I didn't have anything left within me. I didn't have any reserves. Um, and that's kind of where my story about being public about my cancer journey started. That's going to be an interesting story. I remember yeah. there's a lot of detail there. That I think you're going to share some of yes. that later on. Yep. So that won't be this podcast. Right. And what sticks out to me about your journey the most is, you know, you go into the cancer journey. I think you found peace from what I can see, and you can share this um, related to fear of death. And I know you still you know, every time you go in for, you know, the next uh, assessment, the question of, hey, what does this mean next? But what I think is interesting is finding purpose and meaning mm -hmm. in the midst of this journey. That, that's been the mm -hmm. big question now you've got too is uh, you've been on this 17-year journey. Mm -hmm. What is God doing with this? Why? What's the purpose? What's the meaning? Mm -hmm. And part of the reason why you mentioned you've now been invited to speak uh, in front of hundreds of people mm -hmm. Um, you're on this podcast now sharing your life with the mm -hmm. world and there's purpose that I think you've found and meaning. And it's not just in, you know, 
sharing the journey. There's something even bigger than that. And so anything you want to share on this first podcast that just defines that a little bit more that would take people a little bit why they may want to listen to themselves for the future episodes? Yeah, I think I had a sense uh, that I, I was going to be transparent about my journey in 2005 at that surgery, I was down in the hospital maybe a month kind of thing. Each time I had these major surgeries, it's been a long recovery period in the hospitals. Um, and I had a sense that I was going to be transparent about what was happening, but I had no clue what that looked like or what that even meant. Um, and it wasn't until 10 years later, uh, after that 2015, really sea change in my journey where it became metastatic and then everything changed emotionally, everything, um, where, uh, all of a sudden I found myself sharing transparently about what was going on. And in the process of doing that, um, finding meaning and purpose. I mean, in 2017, I was sent home to pass, go on disability, leave my law practice, wait and call hospice care. And I decided to leave YouTube videos for my children because I wanted them to remember the way that I p processed mm -hmm. hardship and difficulty and what I was going through. And that gave me a lot of purpose and meaning at that point. Um, so leaving a legacy yeah. uh, with meaning was an important part of the journey, which is what I think you were doing in that step. Yes. As leaving a legacy. And now you're also finding that God's still calling you. Mm -hmm into deeper parts of that journey now with beyond just your family. Yeah, I mean, I have four speaking engagements now planned in the next two months, and I've never asked to speak anywhere that people come to me and ask me to speak. Um, I think I come at it from a uh, more of a humble state because I know I don't have the answers, but I do want to communicate uh, how I found inner peace, lasting peace. I've done the cancer journey with lots of people who, who had no peace uh, until they made certain decisions and did certain things on their journey. And um, it's a rough, rough road to, to go when you have no inner, inner peace with it. So yeah. inner peace, peace is not just emotional health. There's right. a spiritual health yeah. that you're going to be speaking to. And it's a, a faith that. journey yeah. as well as it is an emotional health journey as well as a physical journey. So all of those pieces are important in this journey. And, and you're going to be talking a bunch about the emotional and spiritual health aspects in this podcast of what you found along that journey. Yeah, I think the purpose for me of this podcast, you know, I have my own personal spiritual journey. And I'll go into that, what that looks like for me. Um, but uh, I think it's it's uh, encouraging and it provides hope for a person who's been diagnosed with cancer or they have a family member uh, to hear the process that I've been on. Uh, and um, because a lot of people don't speak about their cancer journeys, very personal, and uh, don't feel like they can share about it for whatever reason, whatever's going on inside of them. And it's hard because there's some denial that's going on and and we'll speak about that at some other podcast. But uh, there's so many different concepts that are out there that you and I have talked about these yeah. a bit about people who are not sharing. They need to put on a position of strength. Uh, right. They want their family to feel like that they're showing a, a face of strength right. to um, if they share any negativity, then God may not heal them to yeah. having people come and say, you're going to be healed and they're not. Uh, we've seen all kinds of versions of things and we're going to talk about those different experiences because I think you've had every single one of those. I mean, in 17 years, I've had people, yeah, it's, we can talk about the different praying over experiences you <laughs> or advising me on what a cancer cure is and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah. Thinking about alternatives, you have to go these alternative yeah. things. Uh, yeah. There's so much to talk about in this space. And, and it's yeah. not, you're not trying to talk about treatment. No, I don't want to uh, dwell now. on the medical side of the physical side, although we're going to talk about that. And I do that in the cancer support group. Um, I've been running that for 16 years now. 
Um, but I've done everything from soup to nuts with folks. I've done the diagnosis. I've done surviving. I've done end of life journeys many times with people. And it can all be done w experiencing inner peace. It can. That is possible. So that's the big theme of this podcast. Yeah. Peter has also put together a uh, website, cancerandpeace.com. And so you're going to see all kinds of resources out there. And each one of these podcasts will highlight that again. He has his book out there on the website. You can get Pan Cancer and Peace and see Peter's story and read a little bit more there. And many other resources are going to be available there because uh, you and I, if we've gone through this recovery and inner journey space, have found there's just a lot of great tools along the journey that's helped both of us out in yeah. our journey to find peace in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so this first episode was really just to introduce you to, hey, where are we going? And what, right. why uh, would you be interested in this if you're a cancer patient? And in the coming episodes, we're going to get into the details, the weeds of your life, and you're going to share the real. And we're going to talk topically about uh, experiences and, and ways of approaching the inner journey. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have fun doing it because yes. uh, you and I like to uh, – to, this one's a little bit more serious yep. because we're inter uh, introducing more resume style. Yeah, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun too yes. because uh, we're gonna. There's gonna be a lot of banter and yes. and the funny things we've seen and the things yep. that um, are stories that you shake your head at and like, what the heck happened here? Yeah, um, all those are going to be part of this podcast. So we hope you as a listener enjoy hearing this story and find deep hope and meaning and peace mm -hmm. on that journey. Yeah, thank you, Sean. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Peter.